Okay, so welcome everybody to the 7 a.m. Mastermind Club, and thanks for getting on and waking up with us on a Sunday morning. And if you're listening to the recording, welcome, welcome to the room. So oh, welcome. <laughs> Perfect. So welcome everybody. Today we're doing uh, law number seven. So what we're doing, we've been doing for the last uh, seven weeks is the invisible laws. And these are the laws of the universe. They're always working. Uh, you can't see them. They're just like electricity or energy. You can't really see it, but they're always turned on. So once you, uh, once re you re we remind you of these 11 forgotten laws, uh, when you're going through life, you're going to start like putting, p you know, the pieces together and you're going to start connecting the dots moving forward and now moving backwards. So I'll just do a recap uh, for all those who just joined us. Uh, the first law on week one was the law of thinking and the law of thinking dictates that we can only attract what we think. So bottom line, what we think will become. Law number two was the law of supply. And the law of supply depicts that the universe is a source of unlimited supply. So there's no such thing as scarcity. There's no such thing as not enough. There's unlimited supply, guys. Law number three was the law of attraction, law of vibration, we called it. And the law of attraction essentially is about that what we focus on, we will attract. So wherever your focus is on, that's what you get, keep getting more of, good, good or bad. <laughs> the law of receiving was law number four, and the law of receiving works hand in hand with giving. So this is where we give, uh, uh, willingly give, and, um, and receive unconditionally. The law number five is the law of increase. And the law of increase is about being happy and grateful for what we have now. So not to like focus on what we don't have, but focus on everything that we have and be grateful for it. Uh, keep our eyes on everything that we have. Law number six was the law of compensation. That's the one we did last week. And this is the law this law is all about a space or vacuum. So it's about like making space for new things, you know, letting go of the old, making space for new. And today we are going through the law of non-resistance and every thought has a frequency. The less you resist on something, the less it will exist. By devoting less attention towards fighting the unwanted thoughts and conditions, you will find that the problems that you face become less and less pervasive. In pursuing success, you'll encounter resistance along the way. By not focusing on the resistance, you'll eventually achieve the success you want. So this is in essence what the law is about. So bottom line, it's, uh, it's, more, it's all about going with the flow, eh, Carolyn? Yeah, it's all about going with the flow. I love the expression, whatever we resist persists, right? So if, you, if you're feeling that something is an obstacle or something that's not wanted in your circumstance, the more you focus your attention on it, the more you push up against it, the more you swim upstream versus flowing downstream, the more it will keep showing up in your life. So the whole idea is to that expression also of going with the flow is like, you want to always be feeling that everything is at ease. You want to be feeling in harmony. You want to be feeling like you are flowing downstream with ease. And what I love about studying the laws is that they are so magically tied together. You know, when you recognize one, you also see how another one kind of interacts and gets woven in with it. So when you're, you know, when you're speaking of non-resistance, and I'll read a few you know, excerpts from working with the law, you'll, you'll start to recognize how other laws you can recognize in the text of each one. Exactly. So uh, what's, uh, what's fun about this law, I think the easiest way um, we can explain it is when somebody pulls a trigger, meaning, you know, somebody that really, you know, that knows you or doesn't know you well, they'll, they'll say something to you and um, they'll say something to you, then you might feel like hurt by what they say. Most of the time, what we're going to do is we're going to react back. You know, if somebody says something not nice, our, in, our initial reaction <laughs> is to react. You know, it's like, oh, why are you doing this to me? Or insult back. You know, you're stupid. No, you're stupid. You know what I mean? So like kind of like, you know, re resisting and like, like giving into that. The whole idea of non-resistance is that somebody can say something, somebody can say something hurtful or somebody can do something hurtful, uh, but you don't take it personally. You don't react to it. You stay within your own calm, your own happiness. 
you have to understand that when you are a creator, you are the creator of your, you know, your life. And we work with our thoughts and our, our mind is our workshop and that you are in charge of your life. Now, when people come into your life and, you know, they don't act the way you expect them to act, you know, or, or something like that, you might feel disappointed. That means that the outside world is in control of you and your emotions. Okay. The idea is that people can do whatever they want, but you're, you've taken a decision, you know, to be happy, to be wealthy, you know, whatever decision you've taken, uh, because you've taken a decision to feel good all the time, because you know, that vibration, you know, more good brings good. You decide to react to everything with goodness. So they might say something and instead of like being in their face, yeah, you too, or look at you, or well, what do you think you are? You're more like, okay, that's interesting. And you practice, you practice. It's not easy because you were trained for the opposite. This goes against our nature. Yeah. So you practice uh, really like, just like not reacting to it. And the best example I can give is uh, just recently I was out with my daughter and there was this woman who uh, clearly was not, uh, you know, uh, all there mentally. And uh, she just started screaming at me and my daughter, you know, uh, and we had two different reactions. Uh, I reacted very calmly and I just kind of moved away and, you know, didn't do anything. And my daughter decided to confront, you know. So when my daughter decided to confront, this woman would not leave her alone. They were just like at it. And I was just like, you know, pulling out. So, so this is exactly the law in place with two di our two different uh, personalities, you know, one that's kind of calm. She didn't bother me. She left me alone. And then when my daughter was sitting alone, the, the woman came alone to my daughter. Why? Because the confrontation was there and they confronted, they kept confronting each other, you know? So their both, energies, their energies were Their energies aligned. were mixing. Exactly. Exactly. So, uh, so for me, it was just an example. It was a great opportunity to show my daughter, you know, just like, uh, deal with it calmly, walk away, you know, uh, you know, no one to walk away, no one to turn around, no to, you know, be nice. I just said, look, miss, you know, I understand you're having a hard day, uh, you know? <laughs> I'm just, I'm just trying to have a nice meal with my daughter. That's it, you know, and kind of, she left us alone, you know? So, so basically th that's pretty much, um, you know, th that's the best example I can give as well. There's always two ways you can react to it. Respond. Yeah, respond. So it's responding versus reacting. Reacting is just you on fire. You just fire back. You trigger, they trigger back. You're shooting and they're shooting back and, uh, responding, responding takes thinking. You got to think before you respond. I had to think, I'm not going to go into her mess. I'm not there. I'm a happy person. Like it's not my, you know, her, I don't want to let her chaos come into my world. I don't allow that. Yeah. So, 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 so this is really the law of resistance and it comes on many different, you know, many different things will trigger you. Sometimes it's people, sometimes it's an event, uh, yes. you know, Come and, and you want to become aware of your ability and your right to control your own emotions because being in charge of your life and being a co-creator of your life is knowing that you have choices to make as far as how you send your day into you can choose how your day is going to go simply by the way you think right so when i think of responding I think of an easy flow. When I'm thinking reaction, I think resistance because reaction creates turmoil. It creates this feeling of, well, just the word resistance, it's pushing up against something. You're trying to push something away instead of surrendering to it, allowing it. Just like Bazit's example, somebody, you know, is in your face or it can happen. I mean, it happens everywhere. It can happen out in, it can happen in your own home. It can happen with your kids. It can happen anywhere. And you don't want to fuel it. So by few, by by re, by reacting to it, you 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 perpetuate that energy. So you know it, it's a really it's an interesting way to observe your circumstances in your life is to see okay this just happened to me. I get to choose. Okay, I'm just I'm going to read a couple of uh, examples from the text from uh, working with the law. Um, so it says resistance as a means of securing peace and harmony is a mistaken and misleading idea because you tend to think, well, I'm going to resolve this by barking back because then it'll be resolved. But that's in fact what you're doing. Yeah, that's a natural reaction. That's so. the way we're programmed is I'm going to say my piece back because, you know, and, and the law of cause and effect, yeah. right, is that everything has an equal uh, counterpart and reaction. So it, it by law, if somebody brings chaos and you respond with chaos, right? You're only going to perpetuate the same energy. So it's your, you have the ability 
to stay within your own mental control of your mind. So it says true harmony cannot come from inharmony, nor peace from discord. Resistance fails because it is not in accord with harmony and order, and harmony and order are the law, right? It seems contrary to the natural reactions of a body, for when we meet with opposition, it seems natural to steal our energies, collect our wits, and use whatever means we have to outwit and break down the opposition. Yet, as contrary as it may seem in one sense, when it pertains to the more serious things in life, we are unconsciously using the law in the trivial and material things. There are so many other names given to the law that we may not recognize it always as the, it's always the primal law of non-resistance. So I like to think of it, they give the example here as well. Um, think, of a, think of a flowing stream, okay? Think of a stream that starts from a trickle up at the top of the mountain. And the stream's only goal is to make its way down to the big ocean and on its way it you know encounters other little streams and it's going to slowly stream itself into a river and the river is going to stream itself into a bigger bigger waterway that's eventually going to lead to the ocean the toughest part of the stream's journey is at the very top of that mountain when it first starts and it's got to make its way down and that's all it wants to do is to flow downstream but what happens as the stream flows down the hill it's going to encounter obstacles right there's going to be rocks there's going to be trees in its way there's going to be a lot of obstacles in that little streams way to get to where it wants to go but does the stream stop and then start and then stop no the stream just finds a way around the obstacle. It keeps going. So when the rock is in its place, it goes around the rock, right? And it keeps flowing down till it meets the larger waterway, till it all flows together. So think of your day and anything that is unwanted that shows up, just think of it as a boulder in your stream. And your job isn't to move the boulder. Your job is to flow around it. Does that make sense? That's it. When you become a, a, a master you know, creator, bottom line, what it is, is that the outside doesn't affect the inside, meaning you're always in control of how you feel. And, and we know that our thoughts become things, right? So, so, and the most important thing is that feelings also bring it into reality, bring it into reality. So if we allow the outside, you know, to, to bring chaos into us, well, we've become chaos as well. We've allowed somebody else control, you know, somebody else or circumstances control, you know, our day. That's not being a creator. That's being a victim of circumstance. Right. That's the opposite. A creator is somebody who can see all this, like I can observe all this. And what was really funny when um, my daughter was having this confrontation, I was more of an observer and my daughter was saying, mom, she's crazy. And I'm thinking, well, so are you, you know, and I meant it in a funny way because they were both mimicking each other. But, you know, my daughter was seeing her and the other one was seeing her. But the truth is they were going into the chaos of one another. And as an observer, I'm watching this and I thought, well, there was two ways we could have handled this. Okay, now she's 16. Of course, she's, you know, she's still very young. <laughs> she's a young creator, a young creator. Uh, but, you know, this was a great opportunity. Uh, and I explained to her how it works. And I told her this, is, this was a fantastic opportunity uh, for me to, you know, teach you you know, uh, yeah. how to master the situation. So next time it comes. Um, so basically this is it is not to be at the mercy of your circumstance, uh, not to react because we were taught to react. Like, you know, you feel good for a little bit, like your ego kicks in. Oh, I told her, I showed her, I did that. Or, you know, uh, look at me handle this. It's not about this or, you know, road rage, you know, <laughs> somebody cuts you off and you're like, Oh, I'm going to go cut them off. You know, no, you know, they cut you off. It's like no biggie, you know, let them cut off. You stay in your lane. You stay in your lane, you keep going to where you're going. You don't allow these things to uh, unbalance you because feeling good, it's, remember we talked about the law of vibration. The most important thing is to keep your vibration high and good because if you want more good, you gotta keep the feeling good. Yeah, it says here that the law does not require us to work over or against the things we do not want, 
but it does require us to work with and for that which we do want. You know how we always talk about focus on what you want. Notice what you don't want as the, the contrast. So you notice what's showing up that you don't want, and it's only showing up because your mind made it so. So you just want to notice it, but then don't live there. Don't, don't spend any time focusing your attention on what you don't want. Only focus on what you do. So it says we dare not give our time, thought, and energy to that which is opposed to what we want. That is setting up a resistance contrary to the law, and it blocks the way for our good to come in. Right? So, um, so you hurt yourself. Basically, if you're reacting, you have to understand because you get what you give. Now, if you give back anger, if you give back hate, if you give back frustration, you're getting it back. It will you're show getting up. It back. You're getting it back. So you have to think twice, you know, what am I giving? Because if I don't want this, if I don't want more drama in my life, you know, or no more drama in my life, you know, the whole song, if you don't want that, then you, you know, there, there's many ways that you can, um, you know, th that you can keep your control. A, you can walk away too. You can talk nicely to the person, you know, obviously they're going through something difficult. You can come from a place of compassion. They're going through something difficult. Uh, you can also walk away if it's like, you know, one of those toxic things and just send them love, you know, send them love. Yeah. Uh, when you're talking with somebody, let's just say it's family, it could be a parent, it could be, you know, somebody who's very close to you. You don't need to react. You just say, okay, that's interesting. You know, uh, okay. You know, that's interesting. And just kind of like, listen. And, and the whole idea is you have to understand that we all live in our own different worlds. We're not here to, um, control anybody. That's not our job. Our job is just to control ourselves, you know, yeah. just to control ourselves. And, um, and yeah, so and, Right. And yeah. by us maintaining, I was just going to say, by us maintaining our peace and harmony, uh, we, we are in control of ourselves. Yeah, and that's, that's number one. So if we go through life fighting, opposing, resisting, arguing, we're bound to meet with many obstacles and likely become so occupied fighting them that we lose sight of our real objective. So that's focusing on what you don't want and making what you don't want your prime focus. And that's what you don't want to do. And what Pazit said, that's probably, and there's a couple of questions and we'll get to them in the chat. Um, one of the, well, the best way, if there's somebody in your life circumstance and you feel there's um, a challenge or a struggle there, okay? Extend a loving thought to anything when you extend a loving thought to anything or anyone, it removes the opposition and enmity that once seemed there. This removal must first be in the person's consciousness. And once the thought of enmity is removed from your consciousness, you will not attract the same condition again. Bless them that curse you and pray for them that misuse you. Why? Blessing calls forth the highest good within you. The highest good within you can only attract the highest good from another. To attract such good, you are running around all opposition. So now your stream is going around those boulders. So to attract such good, you're running around all opposition and abuse. Thus, to live the law with others about you does not especially favor the others so much as it favors you. So it's really important that... And we all have, you know, circumstances of opposition that show up, but it's really important that we not be thinking that I have to control that person's behavior for the boulder to go away, right? The law tells us that the only person that we need to be in control of is our mind ourselves. So if there's somebody that's in your life, you can't change them, but you can change the way you think of them toward them so if you're sending them love constantly we, we we are vibrational energy whatever you send out to them they receive it's law they must so when you send love out to something in your life that is in opposition to you you're helping yourself and by helping yourself you change the entire situation by the way you think of it. Right. And it doesn't mean that you agree with them. So I want you guys right. to completely understand. It doesn't mean that you agree with the way that they acted or that you agree with what they said when you're sending love. What you're doing is you're sending love to you because by sending love to them, you're sending love to you. Um, so who benefits? You do. You yeah. do. 
So uh, that's it. And you know, like sometimes like you can get into like some kind of argument and it could take on weeks and then you call your friend and the other friend. And did you hear what she said? And then, and now, you know, you're in the energy that's going to take you down. It's, it's going to cause resistance for all the good that you want, all the good. So who are you really hurting? Yourself. yourself and so you got to remember uh, another thing is that we must respect everybody's uh, everybody has their own uh, sets of beliefs uh, their own world and everybody wants to be respected for it so it's okay not to agree with what somebody else is doing um, but at the same time it's also like letting them be you know you, you got to let people be like you want people to let you be you right you want to be you you, you don't want to be like you know you don't want to have people like um uh, picking on you. So the same thing on them, when they say something that might not, uh, uh, you know, you might not, you might agree or disagree with, it doesn't really matter. It's just their point of view. They're just sharing and you want to accept them because you want people to accept you for your point of view and your opinion doesn't mean that we have to agree with it, but we can definitely listen and, and say, okay, that, you know, that's cool. That's like a different perspective. Uh, you know, and uh, that's it. And being more accepting and allowing of people to express themselves uh, that is true to them and not judge them for it or condemn them for it uh, or yeah. get mad at them for it. Yeah. So the very last part of this law is every worried thought, every fear, doubt, complaint, argument, and angry thought. Okay. Thought, not just, not just the reaction part, right back to the thinking part. Okay are but so many boulders. So think of your thoughts that are resistant thoughts. They're, think of them as boulders, right? There's so many boulders, large and small, that you cast into your stream. These tend to change your course and to lengthen the time for your goal to be reached. Unite your forces for good with the good that is seeking you. So that's keeping your vibrational energy in that really, really good feeling place. Remove and dissolve every obstacle by blessing it and being willing to understand it. Mm -hmm. Mark it no longer a stumbling block, but a stepping stone leading to your highest good. So that comes back to, you know, why is this happening to me? Well, that's a victim mentality mode. Why, what is this? This is happening for me, not to me. What is the opportunity here? What am I to learn? And it requires us to actually use our thoughts. We have to think. Most people don't think. They go through their day habitually using the same thought patterns they did the day before and the day before that and the year before that and the decade before that. But to become a conscious creator that you all are, you have to be aware that your, your thoughts every day your mind is your workshop. So you need to be consciously aware of how you're thinking. Take a moment in that gap between reacting and responding. Understand what's really going on. Send love to whoever it is that's sending, you know, the torpedo and just step out of the way because it's not meant for you. That's their business. That's their stuff. It's not our stuff. We're in control of our stuff. So think of the stream. Anytime you come into contact with something that's unwanted, just say, no, there's no boulders in my stream. I'm just flowing. I'm flowing downstream. Yeah, and all the people that are diff you know, the, that trigger in you in your life, you can honestly thank them because they allow you to practice. <laughs> they allow you to practice. So you're like, okay, this is fun. Okay, yeah, give it to me. Okay, let me try. Let me try. Right, right. Let me try because it, it's really because it goes against our nature. You know, it does go against the nature. Like somebody is not nice to you, and you're like, you want me to send them love? You know, it's so funny. I was um, consulting a client, and she had a bit of a family matter, and she's like, how do I? What do I do? I said, you, you, you know, you just send them love. She's like, what? Like, that's the advice you're going to give me? And I'm like, yeah, that's all I got for you. That's all I got for you. Uh, you know, uh, think of night, think, uh, I want you to think of three nice things of this person right now. And that's about shifting your focus. You know, uh, everybody has something nice about them. You know, uh, you might not like uh, their attitude. It might not be something that, you know, you prefer. It's not one of your preference, but there's always something good. You know, it's, you like this person uh, ambition. You like that this person dresses nice. There's always something good you can find. If you're looking for the good, you'll find the good. If Leave people the bad, with the impression of increase. We did that law, the right. law of increase, right? Use right. that law. That's why I say they're all, you know, it's so elegant. The, the laws are just so beautiful because they all are interwoven with one another. And the more familiar you become, I mean, get, 
Working with the Law is an amazing, amazing book to read. There's other ones, but we're reading from this one. But get yourself a copy. Become more familiar with the laws. Study them every day. Pazit and I are in the study for hours every day because, you know, it's, it's material that really, like, it becomes part of you. And then the, the, the phenomenal feeling of knowing that you are you are the creator of your life. You are not subject to circumstances. You can't be a victim of circumstance when you learn how to use the laws for you because you're using them because they don't go away and come back. They're always here. But most of us, we've become accustomed to behaving and acting and thinking in a certain way that we're actually using the the laws against ourselves. So when you become really super aware of them and how they're beautifully intertwined, then you start, you start using them toward your greater good. And then when you're using them toward your greater good, guess what you're doing? You're improving the greater good of humanity, right? Okay. And we raise our vibration and, and we encourage another to raise their vibration. We're raising the collective. Because it's a social consciousness, but you have to remember, it's not just your thoughts. First of all, your thoughts are not really your thoughts. It's thoughts that you were taught to think, you know, whether it was from family, circumstances, these are things that you picked up, you know, it's not your own thoughts. When you become a conscious creator, it is, it's starting, you're starting to take control and you uh, create your thoughts. And so the social consciousness is also, you're not just getting your own thoughts, you're getting everybody's thoughts. Everybody, when you go to a coffee shop and there's all these people, you're picking up on everybody's thoughts, yeah. not just yours, you know? So it's like a frequency, you know? Yeah. Uh, everybody's vibrating at the same frequency. So what you want to do is uh, when you're working with the universal laws, it's like we're playing a game and now you know the rules. You know when you play a board game, guys? You know, you've ever played Monopoly or whatever? But once you know the rules, <laughs> you can own all the hotels and <laughs> you, can, you can like win the board. And that's the goal. The goal is to win the game of life. And the game of life is to know these universal rules. Most people don't uh, spend the time in it. Uh, most people are even unaware of them, you know. And by you being aware of them, uh, next time uh, a trigger comes, any kind of trigger, you know. You might even like knock your foot on the side of your bed instead of going like, oh, fuck, you know. I hate this, da, da, da. You'd be like, okay, whoa, whoa, whoa. Let me catch myself. Okay, maybe oh, fuck first. And then it'd be like, <laughs> it'd be like, okay, okay, I can dance, I can dance, it's not gonna hurt, it's not gonna hurt, you know? And you, and you shift and you shift and you shift and you become so good at it, you start laughing with the world. Like it just, it becomes a dance, everything becomes a flow. And you realize that, you know, um, that, that you get to decide. And it's so funny, when, when I knock my foot on the, on the corner of the bed, uh, like it doesn't even hurt anymore. Before I'd be like going on for hours, you know? Bouncing up and down, now it's just like, I take a minute, take it in. I said, it doesn't even hurt me. It doesn't even hurt me. Well, and that's I'm, like the, that's like away. the fractured ankle in December. I mean, it was, right. it was what it was. And I went and I had it seen and, and I was, you know, popping wheelies with a wheelchair around the hospital with my sister-in-law. And it was like, okay, all right, it's here. It is what it is, right? That's it. You don't want to attach anything to it because everything just is. It's only when we start comparing it or giving it, you know, mm -hmm. any kind of energy that it changes. And, you know, you can, your thoughts can go down, you can bring your thoughts up very quickly, but you can also be taken in the other direction. So you always want to be mindful of thinking thoughts that are going to keep you in a really good vibration. Um, I just want to go into the chat for a second because there's a few questions in here. And sure. then, um, Let's do that. So Gabriella says, what happens when a person is a constant boulder in your life, but you cannot remove that person from your life? Well, so here's the thing. No, you can't remove them but you can control how you respond. Mm -hmm. And I think we, you know, when you're sending them love, no matter what the circumstance, if you're sending them love, you're raising your vibration and their vibration and things will change. They won't necessarily, it's not that they change, but the way they feel, their thoughts will change. It's like doing a dance with a person and you're, and you're dancing and one person changes their step, the other person must somehow respond by changing their step somehow to be still in the dance with you. Yeah, I was just gonna say also when you don't respond, the person doesn't wanna play with you. Because right. The, per the person who triggers you wants a reaction, but when you don't give it to them, they're like, okay, 
it's not fun anymore, you know? So you just, you, you, you don't respond. You don't respond. You can walk away. You could just, you can let them know uh, that, uh, you know, like if that's, you know, if they're feeling that they're in this kind of mood, that's great, but you're going to walk out of the room and when they're ready to sit down calmly or talk to you, whatever, you know, that's cool. You know, you come back in the room, but you could just let them know. And then you go in the other room and you send them love and you do shift the energy by yeah. sending them love, believe it or not, they're going to feel it. And over time, you're going to see that they're going to come to you and you're going to be like, what happened? What happened? It was the work that you did with your mind. That's what happened. It shifted. Yeah. It will it, shift. It, it will definitely shift. And, and yeah. you may not see it. You may see it right away. I've had circumstances that yeah. change like immediately. Uh, or you may see it over time. And, you know, I've, I've had, we all have, you know, people in our, in our life experience. And I would say to them, I'm, I would tell them. I'm sending you love. And they'd say, you know what? I know. I feel that. Yeah. Right. So, so yeah, you, you want to get into the habit of doing that. And is it going to be an, a, an easy habit to, it's like any habit. It takes practice. Well, just make it fun. Make it like a game. Just say, okay, here he goes again. She's going to pull the trigger or he's going to pull the trigger and you make it into a game and you're like, okay, let me see. I can respond differently this time let me see you know so then you start like like it becomes playful and you're like okay give it to me and then you see how you are you know and you're like damn you know oh shit I, re I you know I reacted again I scrammed I got into it again okay so you go back and you go back and this person will keep coming back fantastic this person won't keep coming back once you don't want to respond differently they, w they won't so just use this person to practice yeah <laughs> it's practice <laughs> Yeah, Tra Tracy says it also extends to fighting a disease. In the 10 years of her teaching chronic disease and chronic pain self-management, she'd tell people to make friends with their disease and be good to themselves and not oppose it. I think being good to yourself is like the name of the game, right? So, you know, I call it radical self-care, right? You want to get into this habit of it's not, it's not a selfish thing. I think a lot of people attach... Uh, you know, they're so accustomed to caring for others and to being caregivers and being, you know, caretakers of other people as parents, as friends, as daughters and sons. And But being a caretaker to your own self, being a caregiver to yourself, when you feel that you're caring for yourself, your vibrational energy is going to shift immediately anyway. Because most of the time, our resentment comes from the fact that we feel like we're being kind of, you know, taken advantage of maybe sometimes or we're over, there's no such thing as over giving, but there are boundaries that we need to set. And most people that we feel are taking advantage of our boundaries is because we don't set them for ourselves. We can't yeah. expect other people to respect boundaries if we don't respect our own. So that when you want to take time for yourself, take time for yourself. When you want to sleep, sleep. When you want to do something that's, that's self-care, as soon as you start caring for yourself, you start feeling so much better about other people. That kind of, that feeling of being, uh, which is resistance, right? When you start feeling any type of resentment, take a look at, okay, why am I feeling that? What is it that I'm not doing for myself that's creating that energy, right? Because we're going to see, like our inner world creates our outer world. So if you find you're walking around feeling frustrated, take a look at where that's coming from, from within and shift it. Because Absolutely. if you're feeling frustrated within, you're going to find everything around you is going to show up as a frustration, as a boulder. So you want to keep your energy clean. You want to keep your thoughts clean. And you want to pay attention to them as much as you can so that you can be the observer. I, I developed this expression years ago when having to deal with a family member that I used to get triggered by and then get pulled into the chaos. And it was this kind of pull and tug tug of war that would always happen. Um, I decided that I was not going to participate or engage in that anymore. And I chose an expression of, huh, interesting. And that's how I used to answer whatever came up in that conversation that was clearly combative on their part, because that was their energy. That's the way they were, it had nothing to do with me. But they felt the need to lash out and bring me in because misery loves company. And I didn't play the game. So I would just go, hmm. Yeah, you detach. You detach. You have to remember that everybody's going through something, you exactly. know? This is where compassion comes in. 
everybody's going through something. We don't understand what's going on in everybody's mind. Everybody's like a mini world, you know, and there's something going on in everybody's world. So we don't understand. Uh, but it, does that mean that you have to hang around uh, people with bad vibes who are toxic? Fuck no, no, you don't. Even if it's a family member, sometimes you gotta, you know, love them and, you know, walk away, you know, and that's okay, guys, uh, you know, but you could still send them love. But the thing is, is not to be, uh, not to let yourself be absorbed by their, uh, you know, by their world and what's going on. If they choose to be sad, if they choose to hate, if you get bad vibes, if I get bad vibes, I mean, uh, I fucking leave. <laughs> I don't want that. You know, I know that um, it's part of self-care where you have to say like, uh, my goal is to be happy and I'm going to be happy no matter what. And I get to choose as a creator, I get to choose my reality. And that's your power. That's your power, guys, is that you get to choose. So you get to choose if you stay, you get to choose if you leave, you get to choose if you hang around with this person, you get to choose if you don't hang around with this person. Um, but the most important thing is even if the people that are the hardest on you, they are the best friggin' lesson. They are the blessing best in your teachers. life. They are the best teachers because when things are going good, guys, it's so easy. Come on. If, if, if we love everybody, it's like peace and love. It's like, okay, you know, it's utopia, right? It's like <laughs> everything is like, you know, it's so easy. Nothing's challenging you. The people that come, it's not a challenge. It's more for you. It's for you to take your power and say, I got this. Okay. This is an opportunity. You know, I'm going to use this, uh, you know, to react better, not to respond. And you'll see that once you change the dance, the dance will change. Yeah. The dance will change. It has to. It's law. Law works yeah. for every person, every single time. It's not, they're not man-made laws or universal laws They're invisible laws, but man didn't make the laws. Man can't change the laws. Right. And when you're a creator, you're working with universal laws. You're not working with the physical laws anymore. Yeah. So because you are, uh, you know, you're working from your higher self, not your lower self. The lower self is the ego. You know, oh, I show them, I do the, uh, the, look what happened to me. Look what I said. Look what she said. No, no, that's your lower self. Your higher self understands. Your higher self says, okay, <laughs> there's something going on in this person's life I may not be aware of. So the best thing I can do, I don't want to be in that circle, but I can send them love and, um, you know, it's a blessing. And you know what? It also uh, gives me practice, gives me practice not to, uh, not to go into their chaos. I'm going to keep my peace. You know, you remember your peace and your harmony, whatever you give out, you get back. Exactly. Okay. So, uh, right, so the, the law of receiving and the law of giving there, it's one that's the same coin. That's so right. understand that when you're giving love, you're giving love, when you're giving it out to another, you're actually giving it to yourself. Exactly. And you're going to find that the people and the circumstances in your life start shifting because you're coming from that place of love. And then everyone around you, all of a sudden, these nice, loving things start happening. You go, what's going on? Well, you did that. That's right. So uh, it's 740. So I think so. Uh, I think we totally like covered, uh, you know, the law yep. of non-resistance and we wanted to open the platform, uh, you know, maybe give uh, two minutes to uh, anybody who wants to share uh, something with them who wants to mastermind if there's a situation uh, that you're going through that you maybe want some, uh, <laughs> yeah, some help with or you want to share. I think we'll have to do yeah. one minute, Pazit, because we've what? got a great group this morning, but we've got yeah, I think we'll do a minute. <laughs> okay, so please, uh, like one minute and, and see how you can, and let us know how you can use the uh, law of non resistance uh, to your benefit. Anybody want to share? I, I do. I had an example. Okay. This class is so powerful. God bless you all. Thank you so very much. I'll make it very quick. It's one minute. As I wrote on your chat, 23 years, I'm, I'm married into a Sicilian family, I'm Irish. and just that in itself was very difficult, but especially 23 years ago with all the, the concepts of different family dynamics. And my sister-in-law, oh dear God, she is the hardest, toughest, bulldozer person I've ever met in my whole entire life. She was the, oh my gosh. I thank her. Like I said, I wrote on my chat, she created who I am by not allowing a lot of things to come to me, if this makes any sense. Um, her mother just passed away and I ha happened to be uh, my best self by trying to show love in the last 23 years, try to be involved with the family, try to help them, try to be there for them. And every time I tried, it just got worse and worse, the situations. I almost got a divorce in 2014 over all of it, but I never backed down. I always stood up. And when I said I stood up, I didn't stand up to talk bashful to them. I just kept sending love, but I did it in my mind. And I kept saying, I can't understand why she's talking to me like this or why she's reacting like this and not why she's being so, Im 
I don't know how I can is condescending and, and manipulating and, and just all that negative. And one day I just said, you know what, how about we just go for a coffee? And then I started to reach into her and started to listen to her. Boy, she has a lot of sh- stuff on her shoulders. Mm-hmm. And I just started to be compassionate to her, her life. She never felt that she was loved or even accepted or everything she did never was approved. So then I started to shift it by allowing her take a little bit of control, but in a loving way, not full control that she took over my life, but loving in sense of, um, if she wanted to do the party that, that Saturday, okay, you go ahead. I'll back away. I let her shine a little. And as the years went on, she, didn't bother me anymore. It just yeah. like as if, as as if like, what was my problem? You Why did I make resisting. such? Exactly. You resisting. You allow exactly. things to just flow. Amen. And and once I accepted that, it was like this made my life a whole much more easier. I'm I was creating in my mind all these boundaries. Like, how could she do this? And how could she come in my house and take control? And well, I, I allowed all that because yeah. I wanted to be accepted. But once I put my step back. Uh, after 23 years, uh, now you, you should have, my gosh, at the, at the eulogy, oh my gosh, they were praising how I was so well with her mother and this, and it, it, it all came back. It all no. came back. Uh, it yeah. took 23 years, right, right, but, but it all but, but came back. Beautiful. Well, but what's beautiful is that there was an understanding, and I think that oh, that's man. what's the most important. Thank you so much for sharing Thank that, you, Wanda. Wanda. That's, you, that's really terrific, and good yeah. for you, and, and again, condolences. Thank you. Yeah, what I, um, I thought, uh, Gabriella, yeah, you had your hand up before. Yeah. You unmute, you unmute from your end, because I, can you unmute, uh, Gabrielle? Yeah. There you go. Hello, everybody. Hello. So I love this law. Um, basically, I've been remarried, and then my husband has a son who has been really a huge trigger in my life. And I applaud what you said before about, you know, having those people in our lives definitely helps us grow. And it did. And uh, a few years ago, I was actually able to let it all go and whatnot. But now he has a two-year-old son and he's here a lot more often than I anticipated him to be. I love the little guy, I do, but it's a bad vibe. It's just, and even though I try to put those boundaries on, is just like I came back yesterday from a, a very high and I was excited to tell my husband about my day. I just learned this whole new technique with yoga. So I was like, blah, blah, blah. and then I came home and it was like, and I can't remove myself from that. I live here. So yeah, I send him love and I play with the little guy and the little guy is like, he's so amazing. But it's, it's difficult to find that balance sometimes. And even though I've let go and I've tried to have those boundaries, it's hard to live within the same room. I can't always remove myself. And that's how I, I find that I'm selfish when I want to have those good vibes continue. And I know I shouldn't be selfish, but I don't want to play into his. Well, you get what you expect, right? Yeah, that's so- true. Right. So sometimes we, we have a, um, and, and it happens all the time where we expect a certain thing to be a certain way. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's almost like before you left the yoga studio, you were already preparing for it to be a big, huge boulder. Right. So it's like the circumstance is not going to change, but it's how we perceive it, how we yeah. choose yeah. To, to, to view it. So focus on the good. So if the good is, I love playing with the little guy. Mm-hmm. Then just look forward to playing with the little guy. Don't focus on all the other things. Don't allow them really. And he, he, you know, the other people, person may be in the room, but don't focus on the part that is in opposition to you. And you'll find that the more you focus away from it and you're not, you're not paying attention to it, the more it resolves itself. You end up just continuing to flow downstream and boulders just magically just disappear. 
And yeah. you just let him be, you know, if, yeah. he's, if, he, if he's like in a negative mood, you don't have to give him, you just be nice, polite, you know, because it's the sun, you know, hi, how are you? And that's it. And you go play with the little one and that's it. And you're like, oh, you know, thank God I get to play with the little one. That's fun, you know, and you take your attention where you want to take and you just let him be. Sometimes people want to be upset and they want to be sad, you know, and we have to allow them that space. That's theirs. But it doesn't mean we want to take part in it yeah. or we want to engage in it. We don't want to engage in it, but mm-hmm. we, they don't, they don't change our peace. They don't change my piece. I mean, if my daughter's angry, uh, you know, I, I'm just saying like my daughter is the fastest example I can find right now. Um, I let her be, you know, I say, okay, but mm-hmm. I walk away. I go for a jog, I go play tennis. You know, I find things that I love to do when I come back. She's calmed down. The vibe has changed. Uh, you know, I open the windows so that, you know, change of air, you know, uh, yeah. and, uh, and it's all good, you know, so just let them be, let them be. doesn't mean you have to you don't have to engage, engage in, it. in it. You don't have to pay attention to it. You don't. Yeah. They're there. Find something good. So then look, just look for, instead of on your way to the house and thinking about, oh my gosh, he's there and this is going to happen and it's oh a bad God. vibe and it's a bad vibe. Just only think about, I cannot wait to play with my, with the little guy. That's like, that's all you want to focus on. And then just let that be. What feels look for good. something good. Yeah. I, I, would, I would also suggest we look for something good in your son. Or maybe you could say, yeah. oh, like he has good style. I don't know. You know, I'm just saying, you know. <laughs> oh, I like oh the way. God. I've been there, done that so many times. Right. Yeah. But keep, no, you got to keep doing it. That's the doing thing. It. That's it. Some people are like, oh, I, I tried and it doesn't work. No, no. You got, like Wanda said, 23 years. You got to keep at it you, because like it's your piece and you got to remember what you give to him. You get back you get back. So by sending yeah. love, by giving compliments, who are you really doing it for? Not them, Thank you. you. <laughs> You're the benefiter. I suppose, you know, at some point I've always done it. I guess every now and then I need a reminder like this morning. So thank you we for that. Do. We you all do. We all do. Hello. <laughs> That's why we study the laws every day because none of us ever get to be, you know, what, Bob Proctor studies Think and Grow Rich for, for 58 years right? We need to be in the study. We need to be reminding ourselves of these laws and how our best version of ourselves can show up every single day. It's not like you learn it and then you unlearn it. You have to keep learning it. You have to keep practicing it. You have to keep yourself. Oh, Oh, what happened? You have have to keep yourself uh, uh, consciously aware and yes, remind yourself. And Pazit has these great things she writes on her wrist to remind yourself, right? Don't let your yeah. circumstances, you know, I what say, you write? Uh, I always say, do not go by what you see. Do not let your second, uh, uh, do not let your circumstances control you. She I have to remind myself. Wrist. Yeah. So she reminds herself, I've got pieces of paper and, and little books that follow me everywhere. And then I'm going to those books during the day, going to those books during the day, remind myself, remind myself that happens. We do that every day. Because you have to remember a system for yourself, you know, that makes sense so that during your day, you can constantly remind yourself of, you know, how to feel good. It could be like three or four bullet points that you, uh, uh, you know, like recipe cards, right? Just find a way to cue yourself back into your own mindset being, you know, your mind is your workshop, right? Yeah, you you are amazing. creating your reality. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. He's, okay. he's, he, he's just there for you to grow. Yeah. Just for, he's just there for you to grow. So he's a blessing. And so that's it. You know, you look at it like that and uh, you, you, change the, you change the lens of, you know, like a camera. I think you change the lens on how you see him. You know, you can yeah. see him differently. We can all see each other differently, you know. Thank you. Okay. You got that's it. Great. You got it. <laughs> Fantastic. Anybody else have, uh, have a share? Hey, Natalie. Good morning. Good morning. So what I love about this morning is something finally clicked with me that has been going on in my life for a very long time. When I get into conversations with people and they say something, I tend to shut down, like depending on what they've said, what they've triggered in me, I've shut down. And I've always looked at that as a negative. But when I was listening to you this morning, I'm going, have you ever considered that you're shutting down? It's just, you don't want to get mixed up in their their business or what they're going through. Yeah. So I was always looking as a negative for me that I wasn't actually, you know, responding and reacting Engaging. and saying, you know, screw off kind of idea. You're wrong. I'm looking at that. You know what? You've been doing the right thing. 
you yeah. and letting them have their whatever and you're just stepping back from the situation so what i plan on doing is rephrasing that that i'm not shutting down i'm just you have your moment and i'm just gonna let it be what it needs to be because i don't want to get wrapped up in that so yeah and then just just add a little bit of uh love as a cherry on top yeah so it, it was interesting that i've been doing i've actually been doing the right thing for a very long time but looking at it that i'm not standing up for myself versus i'm actually just doing them a favor and i'm doing me a favor yeah by stopping it exactly as long yeah. as you're not engaging in it and you don't have inner thoughts you mm -hmm. want to make sure that you don't have inner thoughts it's not that you're not reacting but inside of you you're like mm, you know you want to make sure that really you don't become have inner the thoughts. observer yeah. become the observer just like huh well that's interesting yeah. yeah right and then you disengage from what's going on naturally because you are clearly the observer in the situation and when we do that we give ourselves the grace of you know you can say to yourself i'm so grateful right now that i i don't have to engage in this like it sounds like that's what you've been actively doing you've been an unconscious competent mm -hmm. natalie right you've been doing the right thing you just weren't aware that you were doing yeah. the right thing yeah, so that's a really great, great share. Absolutely. It's great, thank you. We've got a few more minutes if anybody else uh, would like to uh, take the mic <laughs> and share. Valerie, you're unmuted there. Do you want to say a few words this morning? Sure. Um, I married a fucking boulder, so. <laughs> <laughs> so go me. Um, but no, there's there's been a, there's been a lot to learn from that lately, and in working on my book, which involves him, I've had to really sort of reframe a lot and come to see him in a in a different way, in a more compassionate way, for sure. Yeah, that's that's part yeah. of the lesson. That's what we see when we when we give compassion to other people. You know, it's the compassion we have for ourselves. I mean, it really is a reflection. We are a mirror. So when we have an opportunity to do that, it's not like we condone anything that may or may not have happened. It has nothing to do with that. We're gonna to get to the law of forgiveness very shortly as well. That's a good one. Yeah. Um, you know, we're not condoning anything. We're just giving ourselves, you know, our power back to think yeah. of the situation in a way that you need to think of it for yourself. You know, it's not about them, it's about you. Right. I yeah. just I under, I understand now what's really been driving his bus this whole time and even though his 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 treatment of me was really terrible and everything I understand where it's coming where it's coming from now. Yeah. So I can be more compassionate. compassionate him well that's what I find. Write a better book. Yeah. Yeah, that's what that's what I find is that uh, once you understand somebody's story, you understand why they're acting the way they're acting. You know, you understand like sometimes, you know, we're all, I, I remember this expression. I always loved it. We're all victims of victims. OK, we're all victims of victims because they fucking passed it down from from generation to generation to generation. And we took it on, you know, so everybody uh, got something. Everybody got something, you know, everybody's dealing with something. So once you know that and you're aware of that and you know that because you yourself are dealing with different things, you know, so you can only be compassionate. doesn't mean that you agree. doesn't mean that you want to hang around it, uh, but you can definitely understand that hurt people hurt people. So they must be hurt at the root of it all. They were hurt or else they wouldn't be hurting you. That's what they were taught. And that's what they passed on. And for them, that's their normal. Sometimes when you grew up uh, in a house or where there's a lot of pain or you were not treated properly, you think that's normal because that's what your normal was. That's what you were taught. These were the habits that were passed on to you. But when you become a creator, you become a thinker and you say, okay, maybe I was raised like that, but it doesn't mean I have to continue the rest of my life like that. I have a choice. To take right. my power back and to change and i'm not here to change people but i can change myself i can change the way i act and by changing yourself automatically the other person uh will you know respond or react to you either they'll walk away because they you know they're not vibrating with your love and your high frequency and no, that's okay exactly. yeah and that's okay or they'll come closer over time and they'll be like you know uh they'll see the situation differently
That's it. Just don't forget some people, because they've been involved in the same environment, if they're not aware that they, I mean, they have the power to change whatever they want. They're creators too. They just don't have the awareness that you do. So you, you understand it, but they have yet to understand it or be willing to see it. So they get very comfortable in their discomfort. Some mm -hmm. people get very used to that feeling of discomfort and when you're there and you're living there, well, obviously everything that you attract is going to be in alignment with that discomfort. So you're going to be, that, that's the way you feel about yourself and that's what you're going to project out to the world. So you get to choose whether you want to participate in that vibration or you want to, or you want to grow and move and flow through your life and you get to accept or reject that. Yeah. And I think, I think, participate in it. Yeah, and I think on a closer, I, I want you guys to all remember this. We're all spiritual beings having a human experience. We're all spiritual beings having a human experience. So guys, you can laugh about all this. <laughs> it's just a game. It's just a game. It's just a game. And, uh, you know, it, it's like we, we give things meaning. It's our mind, our, you know, our things. But you know that you have the power to change uh, and create your life the way that you want. And now you're studying these 11 laws. You, be, you can become the observer of your life. You can become the observer of other people's life. And when I, when I go out or I sit in a coffee shop, uh, I, I start laughing. <laughs> I find it so funny. So most of the people react the same. You could see the social consciousness. You could see how, uh, how uh, you could see the status quo. You start seeing, you know, People talk the same, the same language, even the hi, how are you? Everybody, like, everybody greets everybody the same way. It kind of becomes like very robotic, you know? And, and it's funny. It becomes almost like a, like a play, you know? And so just remember to play, guys. We're here to play. We're here to have fun. Uh, the people that trigger us are just here, you know, uh, they're, they're just here to assist us and to become our higher selves. And uh, as you're becoming your higher self, you're all on the journey. This is why you're here. This is why you wake up at 7 a.m. Uh, because something in you is calling you, uh, you know? you know that there's more and you came seeking for it and there is more and uh the more is that uh you know you want to operate from your higher self not your lower self and once you do that your life becomes fucking magical magical uh because now you're working with the laws and not against the law exactly. most people are not thinking and just remember that they're not thinking they are living in ignorance and ignorance just means it's a lack of knowledge a lack of understanding that's it so think of your life as th this flowing stream and just exactly. decide that you're going to flow downstream with it. And anytime you feel that boulder or rock or tree come across your path, just tell yourself, yeah, I'm just going to go around it. That's what rivers do. That's what streams do. They don't stop. They just keep on moving and they keep focusing on the good. And when you focus on the good, the good gets better and just keep flowing downstream. You know, it's like when you flow that's how you grow, right? You have to grow to flow. So when you're, when you're um, bypassing and just going around things and accepting things and not resisting things, you're in growth mode. And celebrate. Growing. Yeah. Celebrate. Be like, I did it. I did react. I did it. I did it. I did it. I did it. You know, and you can be proud of yourself and, and it becomes more fun. So I'm going to start closing the uh, mastermind, Carolyn, if you're yep. good with that. I have yep. to run on schedule today. So I want to thank you all for coming. I hope that you understood uh, how the law of resistance uh, works for you. Uh, so I'm sure that you'll need a lot of, uh, you know, resistance this week. So you'll have a lot of time to practice and have fun with it. And uh, this is why you study the laws. It's one thing to study, but when you go out in the real world, you get to practice. And it's the practice that makes you uh, the master, a master creator. So have fun and all the people that trigger you kind of look at it. You have all the little tricks now, uh, you know, to, to get past it. Think of yourself as the river. Just be, oh, it's a rock. Let me like, you know, Go around, uh, oh, it's an opportunity for me to send love because if I send love, I get love, you know? Yeah. I want to get love back, you know? So just look at it like this, like it's a game and have fun with it. And the next time you see that person that triggers you, just be like, you know, right away, as soon as you enter the room, you're just like, you know, send them love, blessing and, you know. Uh, walk away and uh, have fun, have fun. Uh, I mean, these laws are meant to be practiced. Uh, we, Carolyn and I, although we know the laws, we still get challenged uh, all the time, but because we're getting oh, yeah. so, so good at it, uh, you know, we're, we're starting to like, just kind of like be more in the flow. And when you're more in the flow, who benefits from it? You. You do. Yep. You do. So remember that you are the creator of your reality and that you are the, uh, you know, master of your thoughts. 
you steer your boat where you want it to go. And if it's going towards Happyville, <laughs> then you do everything to go to, towards Happyville. That's it. One way. It's a one way ticket. It's not like a happy, sad, happy, sad, you know? No, it's happy. Happy, happy, happy. That's what I chose. That's what I want. That's where I'm going. Yep. Great closing comment. <laughs> All really good. Thank you guys for investing your morning time with us. We love our Sunday mornings. Thanks so much. If you have any questions, go post them into the group and, uh, and use the group to share. If you have anything that shows up and you want to like celebrate your wins and how you're using the laws, share it in the group and let, because when we share and uh, our own experiences, we're helping everybody else as well. Everyone's learning from us as we're learning from ourselves. So it's really, really great. This mastermind is this terrific way, even between our Sundays to stay in touch and share your wins. Right. So go have fun guys. Go, go, have, fun. Go, have, fun. go have fun. All right. Love you all. All right. Have a good one. Bye everybody. Bye.